Okay guys, I'm back. Um, what I want to explain in this video is I want to talk about November uh, the 1st of 2017, last year. Um, the Lord gave me a dream, and in the dream I saw two witnesses. Um, I don't know who either one of them are. I've never seen them before in my life. Their clothing was not... Um, it did, didn't seem like their clothing was of this time. And um, anyway, they had a message to give me. I don't know if it is in regards to um, my church, my family, or three people in the world. I don't know. I won't know until it happens, just like you. After the dream was given... Um, I know that Gabriel can, and the Lord Jesus, and angels, can take the memory of the names that was given, and God himself, and he can hide them and seal them until the day that I am to know. The reason I know that is because the car accident that God showed me when I was around 12 years old, um, I didn't remember the car accident at all. I had no memory of it whatsoever. It was like I had a dream and God um, erased the memory temporarily of the dream until the day and hour and time that I needed it. And this is what he did. My dad was in the truck. He mentioned a word, just a simple word. The word itself was a key that unlocked the dream. I remembered the dream completely and fully, and I told my dad what was actually going to happen before it happened across the street, that there was going to be a car accident, and that I remembered it, and as soon as I said all that I said about remembering the dream, and that the word that he said unlocked the dream, boom, the car accident happened across the street. So I don't know if that's what God's going to do at this time um, and that he's going to release the names when uh, three people fall dead. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know why he erased the names. Um, I, I really don't know all these things. I don't understand, but he did so for his reasoning. Um, anyway, these two witnesses said that three shall fall dead, and that was on November the 1st of 2017. Then, exactly 21 days later, I was uh, praying in my truck. I had a truck at that time, a little Ford Ranger, and I had laid down on my lunch break, and I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I commit my soul and my vessel into thy hands, and if you have anything to say on my lunch break, I give to you my time. And I just was laying there, I was listening, and um, I had a, um, a bandana over my eyes sometimes to block out the extreme bright sunlight so I can rest and concentrate on just being quiet, being still before the Lord. And sometimes He gives me visions that way, uh, sometimes not. Sometimes he chooses to have the Holy Spirit speak to me. Well, in this particular situation, the Holy Spirit spoke two sentences. The first thing he said was, get up and press the button on your cell phone and check the time. I did it. I knew that this was the Holy Spirit at work. And when I checked the time on my cell phone, it was exactly 1.44 p.m., well, God had already given me a vision of the number 144 in giant white numbers, 144. He gave me that uh, vision. Um, the uh, March, the f in the month of March of uh, 2016. And I remembered it. I, I didn't forget it whatsoever. I remembered it. And um, so he gave me uh, the Holy Spirit um, as a witness, uh, but then also to lead me to God's plans. Because in uh, 2015, 
of uh, September of 2015, uh, the Lord said that my plans for you will open up after one winter season. Well, I didn't know which winter season, and I just kept praying and seeking the Lord's will for my life and His work. And what He was prodding my heart to do was a women's revival. And so I started working on that with my pastor and all those things didn't work out. It wasn't God's timing. I didn't understand it wasn't God's timing, but I was trying. I was seeking. I was trying. So anyway, after the Holy Spirit said to check my cell phone time, the next thing the Holy Spirit said was now press the button on your cell phone and ask Siri for a farmer's almanac for 2018. So I uh, I pressed the button. I asked Siri for a farmer's almanac. And uh, that was all the Holy Spirit had to say. And he knew that I would go from there and I would find out everything else I needed to know. Well, so that's when I zoomed in. I looked at the farmer's almanac. I took a screenshot with my work tablet. And then I took that screenshot and put a screenshot on my cell phone. Because I don't have a screenshot thing on my cell phone. So uh, anyway, that's when I saw the uh, full moon um, was full on uh, January the 1st and 31st. There was no full moons in February. I also saw that the full moon was going to be full on the 1st and 31st of March, that January and March was a twin. Well, now get this. God, whenever he first started this ministry in me and he started working out his plans in me, and he told me there was a comet coming, and that this comet um, has a number, and it has the devil's number. And then he led me to Gil Broussard, and I found out from Gil Broussard by watching uh, his video with Augusto Perez that the comet does have a number, a size. Its size is 6.66. Well, I didn't think that was too good, so I started thinking immediately that God is saying that it's time for the Antichrist to come forth. And this comet was given this size for whatever reasoning um, to be used in the end times, I guess. So, um, anyway... Um, I just continued to seek and pray and just do whatever the Lord was showing me. And um, when he wanted me to seek out Gil Broussard and all the research that I could, I did. I was faithful and I faithfully researched. I faithfully prayed and he showed me more and more and more. And uh, so here I am. I am your new friend and um, this is his will. This is his plans for my life. And he gave me that dream of my church sanctuary being darkened when I was not allowed to do revival there. And I believe with all my heart and soul, the reason he darkened my church sanctuary was in fact to have me move out of there. And I was so grieved and he wanted me to be grieved in my dream so that I could heal and get past it. And I went and sat down at a table with all these people I did not know. There were people in my church, but my church family was not there. I don't know where they were, but they were not there. Um, in the dream, as I'm grieving, uh, you know the story, I heard a voice in the wall ministering loudly to people. And so I thought huh, there's a hidden uh, room. They remodeled uh, the church, and I didn't know about this room, this new room that they built. And so I went over to the wall, and I tried to find a door, couldn't find a door. And um, I went back to this one little area in the wall. I could hear this person ministering to these people, and they were rejoicing inside this wall. And I, I just couldn't find a door. Well, when I went over to the wall and I put my ear to the wall and was listening very closely, it was a woman. And this woman was me. And I don't understand how she could be me. And yet I was standing there because I have no twin sister. But her voice was my voice. And the way that she talked, uh, the way that she engaged with the people was everything that I am. It, it was me inside that wall. So God was showing me his plans. His plans were hidden. 
His plans were not in that church for me. I didn't understand all that in the dream. It took me months and days and weeks of praying to understand that God's plans for me are not in my church. They were not going to be for inside of my church. Even though I wanted, I prayed, I tried, that it just wasn't going to work out. And God knows the heart of the people in that church. Um, and they just, for some reason, were rejecting me, were for some reason rebelling against everything that I tried to tell them and show them they didn't believe in the work of God in me. And so I just had to move on. I had to do what God wanted me to do. Well, anyway, I believe that my YouTube channel is like an underground church. And I'm a friend and I'm ministering to all of those that will listen. All those that will share and follow me and follow the Lord and what he's showing me. But then also to spread the word and to tell others. And uh, I know that the Lord has shown me that there will be a day that I will walk upon a stage and there will be thousands of thousands of people listening. I don't know when this day will be, but he has shown me it will come. Um, so anyway, so that happened on November the 1st. God showed me that three shall fall dead. Uh, on November the 21st, God showed me that his plans for me did in fact open up whenever he showed me the farmer's almanac, but I just didn't know that they opened up because, see, I was still trying to seek uh, to get my pastor to let me do a women's revival at my church. So um, my pastor said some things to me that broke my heart, broke my spirit, and then that's when I didn't text him back anymore, and I didn't go back to my church anymore. I turned around and walked out and came home and grieved for three days straight. And my little granddaughter walked into my room all three days and said one sentence. She said, Grandma, why don't you start a YouTube channel? She said that three times. And three times is the charm, but I didn't, I didn't think I could do it the first time she came in, the second time she came in, and then the third time she encouraged me that she'd help me because she had her own YouTube channel. And um, I thought, well, maybe the Lord's wanting me to do this and I could try this. And um, so I gave it all of my heart and soul and mind in prayer and Bible study and just seeking and searching, is this what makes you happy, Father? And um, then he gave me the dream, obviously, of giving me my little miniature pulpit that he was well pleased in what I'm doing on my channel and that he sent this man with this awesome love like God and he loved me and he was my friend and by the way, I really think that God it was showing me and has been showing me all along that until this comet gets here in the heavens, straight above my house, my ministry will really not be on fire until then. The reason why I'm saying that is because when he gave me a dream of the comet being right there in the heavens, the same size as it was in that dream, and in the dream, that guy made a point, this guy with this awesome love made a point to ask me, well, how, how long do you think it'll be before it gets here? And in the dream, it was like my mind was overshadowed and I gave a number which wasn't like me to give because the size of it was so big, I don't think I myself would have said that it'd be here in two months but that's what I said in the dream. And I think God orchestrated that. That when I saw it that size, that it would be here in two months. And uh, so um, just remember every time you see a water tower and you look across the land and you're looking at the water tower. When the comet flew across the earth and sat beside the water tower. When it's the size of the water tower 
and we can see it uh, in the heavens, if we're allowed to see it in the heavens, God has clearly shown me it will come close by the earth in two months. I think that's what he's saying. Don't know for sure until that day and time gets here. But he showed me that the fire of my ministry won't start until then. Because in that dream is when he sent all these people into my woods over here by my house. Hundreds of people. And they, two of them, a man and a woman, came over to my porch in the dream and wanted to meet me and be my friend. Uh, but you need to also know, in that very same dream, God branded the front of the comet with a map of the United States of America in black. It was burnt black into the comet face in the dream. So that was God's way of showing me that America, where I live, is going to be judged. Anytime God blackens something like that, it's going to be judged. That's why I feel like the picture of the blackened church that he showed me, and it looked like my church, but it could represent all churches. I don't know. I find it strange that he would only judge my church and not all the other churches that are doing wrong doing far wrong compared to my church and um, but anyway I don't know all the answers but I wanted to share these things with you um, that we need to be busy about ministering to our family and to our friends and if you don't have the strength to lead someone to Christ will you research um, my salvation videos on my channel will you lead them to my channel and take a picture of that particular video and send it to them through a text. Um, email it to them uh, and encourage them to come to my channel and tell them to click on the word video on a computer or a laptop and look at my library. It is a huge library and tell them about the pictures and research of the comment. These things are going to happen, guys, and I don't know if uh, because God lined up the comment on the very last morning that I was able to see into the heavens, which was October the 13th. That's the last day I've been able to see the heavens at morning or night. Um, it's been a coverage ever since. So they're not wanting us to see this come in. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, it moves at a very fast speed. So... Uh, I've really thought about everything I've learned from Gil Broussard, and he said that when it passes by America, that he believed that it was going to loop back around, come back around for the other side of the earth, judgment for the other side of the earth. He believed that in 150 days, five months, that it would be back. And if God can do it before in the past, back in Noah's day, um, and other situations in the Bible, I would have to review all those videos to uh, refresh my mind on the other things that he had witnessed to that God brought the comet back in five months. Uh, one was the day of Noah, and he used the comet to actually... Uh, apparently bring forth an almighty wind and to help dry up the water that was on the earth. Um, so Noah experienced that and the comet itself brought forth, um, you know, the warmth of like a second sun and it helped the earth to start having vegetation on it. Um, so I believe that God uses the comet, um, as his majestic right hand. I really do. Um, anyway, I love you guys. Uh, I hope that all this information has been useful to you. Um, will you let me know, um, have you had chemtrails and uh, do you have winter-like weather in your area? Uh, leave me any kind of comments if you've had dreams um, or visions or any insight from God that might match or add up to any of these things uh, and let's put our heads together and let's pray 
um, that the Lord will guide and direct our paths. Now then, I was going to mention one thing before I let you go. The number 335, I have been praying and praying. God has showed me the number 335. When I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to have to shake the hell out of them. They're not listening to me. Well, that's when he gave me an instant vision while in prayer, while on my knees, and it was the number three, dot, dot, like a timer, like a clock, dot, dot, and um, he took all three numbers, shook the hell out of them, made the five jump up in the air, and then he sent earthquakes uh, through the, three, the two threes. Um, and I don't know for sure, but it could be that he's showing us that in 335 days that Yellowstone is going to blow, which would be this next summer. I don't know. The other thing that I'm curious about is you might have not noticed this, but for two years straight, two marches straight, the march that uh, President Trump got elected, the very first march, the 15th, uh, Trump sent off missiles uh, to the other side of the earth. He did it again this March the 15th of 2018. That's a twin. Well, you guys don't know it, but God has given me a dream, and he placed a woman in the dream, and uh, I asked the woman, um, what, what day is it in the dream? And she said, it's March the 15th. She didn't tell me a year or anything. Um, but war or something um, like a something chemical uh, must have happened in the dream. But I didn't smell anything, didn't sense anything. Um, but every man in this dream had on a gas mask and a black bodysuit like chemical warfare broke out. I don't know what to tell you because I couldn't smell anything in the dream and the girl didn't have on a gas mask and she was wearing a bright pink shirt as if she was a decoy in the dream for a reason and she was really busy after she told me the date of going into the wilderness. So I think that that's a hint from God that we're going to have to flee into the wilderness that the uh, Antichrist is going to rise up and there was a big man sitting at a desk uh, in a house in this FEMA camp or wherever this place was he had on no gas mask but his uniform looked like a military outfit and then the men in black body suits with gas mask on um, they could represent um, warfare coming chemical warfare coming I don't know but so God has showed me another three with the number three a grocery cart empty and a round circle well the grocery cart and the round circle is actually on a church ministry poster in my um, my video room where I download all my videos and except for it has a gas pump in it well I, uh, the Lord Jesus gave me a vision of the number three in red. A red shopping cart being pushed towards the red circle, but the red circle was empty. It didn't have the gas pump in it. So the next morning I got up on my knees and I prayed and I said, Lord, what's the red circle? And what does the three mean? Does that mean in three months? Uh, what does that mean? Because he actually gave it to me in March. Well, he's given me a lot of dreams in March. So I think the Lord is saying that a March that is coming up soon is going to have war. We're not going to have food and we're not going to have gas. And I believe the number three that he gave it to us was a direct sign from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It was in red ink that the Lord Jesus is saying that war and no food and no gas is coming in March, in a March very soon. I thought it meant in three months, but, um, and I really didn't know because we had last year uh, the great eclipse on uh, August the 21st, so I really thought that 
August of 2018 was going to be hell month. I really thought that with all my heart and soul, but through our prayers and my prayers, the prayers around the world, God has given us more time to save as many as we can um, and try and win their souls to Christ. So uh, all I can say, guys, is be ready. Um, but uh, I'm hearing that Nostradamus um, and Edgar Casey, um, and there's another uh, person out there um, I believe they're blind, but they're, they have visions. And I believe all three of them saw something happen at the end of 2018. I was studying some prophecies, uh, just trying to find out if there were people in the past uh, that had saw anything in the year 2018. Um, and... I don't remember what it was that they said that was going to happen exactly, but I do remember that um, they said that uh, chaos was going to come forth towards the end of 2018. So I don't know the answers, guys. I really don't. I do know that um, December the 21st is um, it's a holy day with Israel. That's an anniversary date of something, but I don't remember exactly what it was. But I want to let you know on that very day at 7 a.m. and a little few minutes afterwards is the first time I ever saw this, the comet look like a baby sun. And that is the pictures you'll find uh, on my channel that it looks like it has like a black band around it as a planet-like object, but it was bright like the sun, and it was early a.m. in the morning. That picture was actually taken on December the 21st of um, 2017. And so um, maybe God allowed me to see that for another reasoning, but he hasn't revealed it to me yet. So that day... Um, I don't know if that's the day that the peace treaty is going to be signed, and if so, that's not going to be, I don't think so, that's going to be a good day. But I do know that Trump is really working steadily, and he's praying, um, and he's meeting with, uh, you know, um, church leaders and preachers and pastors. He's met with John Hagee, I know that, and... Um, he is for us, and He is for God's will. Um, but uh, I know that this peace treaty being signed is not going to be a good day. And um, I don't know if um, that's going to be the day that the Antichrist rises, I, the false prophet rises. I, I don't know these, these answers. Anyway, I love you guys. Um, just another th thought. God has clearly showed me that the Antichrist, his name, is derived from the word abomination. Obama nation. Abomination. The Antichrist name comes from the word abomination. But it starts with the A. And uh, just something for you to think about. But God pointed that out to me. His name actually comes from the word abomination. Anyway, I love you guys. Uh, let's stay in prayer. Uh, leave uh, your comments. And I will talk to you soon. I'm sorry I've been in such a delay of getting videos out to you. But I'm sure if you were in my shape... Um, you would be patient too. Anyway, take care guys and just minister to you loved ones, those that are near death, those that are not near death. Let's make sure they're saved guys before they take their last breath. Just make sure. Even though they've lived a Christian life, just make sure in what they believe and that they're saved. They're truly saved. I love you guys.
Peace out for now. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.